So what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off by doing is something uh, pretty cool. And you may have never done this before. I know we were talking about COVID, so if you don't feel comfortable, you can just give somebody a fist pound. I'm totally okay with that. But I need everybody to stand up real quick. Everybody stand up. It's the only thing I'll make you do, okay? Just so you know. Everybody's standing up. Okay, now I need you to go find somebody that looks different than you, give them a hug, and tell them that you love them. And some people would raise their hands and I would say, who hasn't heard those words? And I'd have people raise their hand. They would say, I've never heard the words, I love you from somebody that looks different than me. And as I kept traveling, I said, well, have you ever got a hug from somebody that looks different than you? And they would sit there and they would think and they would say, you know what, man, I, I don't know if I have, Chris. And I said, well, that's a problem. So you know what I'm gonna do? Everywhere that I go, I'm gonna force you to do it. <laughs> and so now when you leave, you can say, man, I didn't know if I'd heard those words from somebody that looks different than me before, but I know that I have now. And I'm also so optimistic. Man, I lost my mom in a very, very, very tragic way. But I'm optimistic, man. I'm optimistic and I think that if I would have been in second grade and I would have went to the same school as my, my mother's killer, then my mom might still be here. If we would have had a teacher that could teach us, hey man, Chris looks a little different. But y'all make sure y'all tell each other you love one another at school. <laughs> All right, so we had a crazy situation, man. Travel got crazy. Uh, got in my flight super late. Didn't even get the right flight. Had to catch a taxi about an hour and a half to get to where I'm supposed to be. Clothes did not come. But the coolest thing was I got here. I didn't even get to shower yet, y'all, because I didn't have no underwear, no nothing. But I got to go um, get a, a brand new suit, man. Tailored suit the same day that I was speaking talking about new shoes right the suit uh, slim fit because you know I'm skinny I needed all that right got everything we needed and it was only it was about four hundred fifty dollars for everything I'm talking about tailor suit shirt uh, you know underwear <laughs> shoes belt tie like everything man shout out to my guy Hassan um, from Lebanon man he told me to say there's peace in the Middle East What's up, man? It's day two here uh, in Kalamazoo. Finished the first day speaking. It was amazing. We got business leaders. We got uh, people in education, in sports, the whole nine yards. It's day two where I get to speak again. Um, but the coolest thing about this conference is that I get to, get to attend it, man. I get to attend it, listen, and learn just like everybody else. Yes, I'm a speaker, but I'm also a student. Uh, the coolest thing that I want to share with you guys about my takeaways is a guy named Stephen Mackey. He said, you may fail, but you are not a failure. You may make a mistake, but you are not a mistake. So uh, take that, listen to it, man. Keep saying it over and over to yourself and let that uh, sit in your spirit for a while. Okay. So I sat down with this lady. Now this is why we listen to understand. Because when you sit down with somebody and you know y'all think different, the first thing that come, first thing that happens, the walls go up, boom. So they're gonna sit down with their arms crossed, their mean face looking. They go, mm, okay, this is what you look like in person, huh? Right, they give me all these looks and stuff. And I said, hey, I'm here to learn from you. And so we start talking. It turns out she's got four adopted kids. Now in the message she said, she said it's the parents' job to share things with their kids about the stuff that I was trying to teach in schools, the stuff that schools teach in schools. And I thought to myself, if she's adopted four kids, wouldn't she understand that not every parent is teaching their kids the things that they should? But she didn't. Remember, I'm better to listen and learn. I can tell her where she's wrong, right? So I'm listening, I'm learning, I keep sharing my story, I keep sharing my heart. And at the end of it, she says, you know what? I'm gonna bring my kids to, to school on Friday. 
I'll bring my kids to school. I said, well, can you tell everybody else you're going to bring your kids? Because I think the only people that weren't bringing your kids, they weren't bringing their kids because you said you weren't bringing your kids. That's why they weren't doing it. Can you tell them that? She said, well, I'm going to go there, but I don't think they're going to let me in the school, she said. I said, why won't they let you in the school? And she had some, some history with the principal and the school district and all this stuff. She said, I don't think they let me in. I said, if you come with me, they need to hear me. I'm going to be speaking, so they're going to let you in the school. So she gets there, everybody knows, and they say, hey, how you doing? She was like, oh my goodness, they really let me in here, right? And so we get in there, man. We, first of all, what I did was I celebrated her. That's the first thing I wanted to do. Before she even heard me speak, I said, man, she had a lot of courage to actually come down here. Because she doesn't know what I'm about to say. I could tell everybody, hey, man, this lady don't want to come with me. I, I could have said all that, but I wanted to celebrate. She said, just don't, don't embarrass me in front of my kids or don't embarrass my kids in front of me. Like, I don't want that to happen. I said, I would never do that. I want you to trust me. You came here, you trusted me. No, I'm trusting you, so let's, let's, let's have a good time. So I celebrated her in front of everybody. We finished with my talk. She said, man, Chris, I am so glad that I brought my kids to hear you speak. She said, I'm so glad that I brought my kids here to hear you share. Can you take a picture with my son? Took a picture with her son. I said, man, this is great. I changed her heart, man. Now she thinks that we should be teaching love and unity and stuff like this in schools. And I'm wrong. After we finished, she said, man, this is amazing, Chris. But I still don't think you should be doing that in schools. I still don't think it's the school's job to do it in schools. I think it's the parent's job. You know what I said to her? I said, we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that. That's exactly what's gonna have to happen. Because you love the presentation, you're glad you brought your kids to school, but you still don't think different. I said, that's okay. But we have to be able to respectfully agree to disagree. First, didn't want her kids to go. Brought her kids there. She loved the presentation, but her heart didn't change. That's okay. I think sometimes for me, me and my mission, I keep asking myself, "Am I really making a difference?" And I feel like I did make a difference in that lady's life. Uh, she was no longer truly hated by her principals and superintendents like she was before. All of me, they, they didn't like her for real, man. I, I realized that real quick. When they said, you know, you brought in here, Chris. I said. Yeah, man, I talked to her on Facebook. But there was growth that happened. There was growth that happened, and we learned to respectfully agree to disagree.